Hello, this is Eric of Sparky Studios and welcome to what is basically part two of my review of the Hollyland Lark Max. We're gonna find out a lot about this device going through battery life. Can we charge the receiver? Can we charge the microphone? Does it work? Does it create hiss? And much more, including what happens when you record for a long period of time? And are there audio alignment issues? And if there are, why? By the way, certain brands of camera have alignment issues, but not all. Interesting. I test with multiple Sony and I test with multiple Fuji cameras. Now let's get started. Sparky Studio. Yeah. To kick things off, let's start with the battery life of this device when you're doing internal recording and not doing internal recording and the receiver. When doing internal recording, the battery died at 6 hours and 31 minutes time frame. Let's go to direct to camera and our battery dies at 6 hours and 53 minutes. The receiver itself lasts up to 8 hours and 30 minutes. Internal recording. After 30 minutes, a new file is recorded so that is very useful if you have audio alignment issues. I tried the Zoom F3 and I tried even with the God X, Verso, M2 and your audio on your Fuji cameras aligned with nothing. Nothing! Anyways, let's get to this. What happened with the Fuji film camera and audio alignment issues. Let's go right here where you see the beginning of the waveform again. We can see it starts and stops exactly identical. And where recording starts at three seconds in, and where it ends, let's go to where actual recording is on the both parts here. We can see audio, but we can see something's not dead on. And it's 11 minutes and about 45 seconds in when removing those three seconds. Here we see we are lined up at two hours exactly, so I can figure out the exact minute we're at. And let's align our audio clips based on waveform, which it still does align. And let's zoom in so we can make sure alignment is pretty much dead on, spot on. So we're going to line this up with the audio tracks, top and bottom. And if I zoom out, I can see right here is recorded and right there is the camera. When it comes to audio alignment, when it comes to audio alignment, the Fujifilm cameras just don't align with external audio sources. And just to prove that, I'm using the Fujifilm X-T4 camera. And now when we zoom into the other section later on, let's see how the alignment is. And we're at 27 minutes in, and let's zoom in. We can see alignment is no longer perfect. Alignment of the Fujifilm versus this device here. The X-T4 was within acceptable bounds, but the XS20 from Fujifilm, the newer camera, was not, and I should not have to modify or change settings in a camera in order to align audio with other devices. Update your firmware and fix that, Fuji. Please and thank you. Sony. I tested the Sony ZV-1 and I tested the Sony A7. No alignment issues whatsoever. So Fuji, you let me down. Now when it comes to audio quality, using the internal recording for the best audio quality versus the Sennheiser MKH-50, is it, does it sound as good? And how is audio coming through? And let's compare this to much, much cheaper dual microphone. Right now you are hearing the Hollyland Lark Max. Right now, we're hearing my Sennheiser MKH-50. Now we're hearing my single, and it's a dual wireless microphone system, that is about three and a half times to four times cheaper than my very expensive Sennheiser MKH-50. So, there's that. Now to test out if I can actually use these microphones and the receiver, well, charging them if it causes any problems with the audio. Right now, we are listening to the Hollyland Lark Max. 
And as you heard, that was me tapping on the microphone just to verify, and we're gonna connect this right away. So let's listen to the sounds, and I'll connect this. And we can also see the icon that this is charging. So let's go to the other side, the microphone side that I'm wearing right now. And now, as we can see, the icon shows us not charging the microphone side. So let's listen to the sounds just for a moment. And let's plug it in. Do we hear any difference in noise or audio? And just to verify, it is charging. There we go. We should be able to see the little icon showing that it's charging. So how is this coming through? Is it any different? Can we use the Hollyland Lark Max for movie making? Yes, we can. And I don't use the firm off. I literally don't ever use the firm off because not only does it change the sound, and yes, we can correct that, by the way. You can cut out around the circle of the little firm off to make a circle opening here, and that will fix the problem with the audio changing. Or just not use the firm off, and you just hide the microphone in your clothing. Stupid. In collaboration with Studio. Yeah. And especially no hug. The microphone was tucked under the shirt, held in place with the magnet. I mean it. Uh, I agree. Huge no to that idea. Microphone was attached to the black shirt underneath the blue shirt of this character. Well, Maybe you two can, you can play a game. Just so I know how pretty I look. Okay. Oh, there I am. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. So look. With this thicker material, I had to use both magnets for the one microphone in order to attach it in place. I, I bought you from Wish. Doesn't that mean you grant wishes? Oh, son of a... Microphone located underneath the tie, which hides most of the magnet. No part of a dinosaur. Now I can go back to business as usual. The Rode Wireless Pro are the Hollyland Lark Max. That is the question, isn't it? Now, 32-bit float will make a difference when you're connecting other devices to the Rode Wireless Pro. Now, the Rode Lavalier 2 distorts very easily, so won't even go there, not even a point to even bother just as well as anything else because it doesn't have the SPL sound pressure level capability to handle it. It's the Rode Wireless Pro. 32-bit float does not add to audio quality per se. It just makes it harder to clip your audio from going too loud when recording internally. And it makes it so you can actually talk really silent, really silent sounds and boost more without adding hiss. Though I do prefer the Hollyland Lark Max, the reason I do is because of the tone. Now in terms of interfering devices everywhere, 2.4 GHz, 2.4 GHz, all these lights behind me are controlled through my Wi-Fi on my phone, which is connected right now, and my Bluetooth, 2.4 GHz. Same bandwidth, same thing as the Rode Wireless Pro, and same as this. 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi in the next room. So there is a lot of interference right now. However, I found when I have my mobile phone right close to this, which is literally two feet away from me right now with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connected, that the audio quality when I have it close, that phone with all these devices connected, the resolution can drop a bit. Now the Rode Wireless Pro, what happens is the sound quality sounds pretty much the same, but you lose reception distance. Now time to demystify audio bitrate. Sample rate is your audio quality, and that is mostly what is going to matter. 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit. This is all to do with audio levels before adding distortion, sound, hiss. But let me go through that. To your camera is generally always going to be 16-bit for those that did not know. It doesn't matter if you have the Rode Wireless Pro. If you're going directly to your camera without using internal recording, it's all the same. So, 16-bit audio. You boost more than 12 decibels, you start to introduce hiss to your audio. 24-bit. You can boost about 30 decibels without adding hiss to your audio. Nice. Now, that's the difference between you going... 
talking like this and the difference of me talking just like this. And that's the huge difference in audio volume. 32-bit float is even exceeding that extreme difference. Where will 32-bit float really matter? If you're going excessively loud, it's less likely to clip. But the Rode Wireless Pro, the audio distorts because it's lack of SPL anyways. And I found this one to hand a little bit higher SPL without distortion. I test the MR view and I test the road as well. I shouted super loud into the road wireless microphone and I can exceed the SPL, which sounds like clipping, but it's not. And you can connect other devices that can handle a uh, high SPL, like the Sennheiser Essential Omni Essential Lavalier that can handle an SPL of something 150 decibels, which can exceed this device, which can exceed the Rode Wireless Pro, but at least the 32-bit float will not clip. There's your game changer for a 32-bit float. Rare use case, niche use case. Now, the time codes. The time codes are mostly useful for those that simply are using multiple cameras and you're jamming to multiple cameras to get them in sync. Or you have a camera that cannot align by waveforms. I'm just going to use the internal recording and use the camera audio because that does not generally work to line waveforms because a camera picks up different audio than you with your lavalier. It might be pick up wind noise, your lavalier might not be pick up wind noise, and those are different waveforms. So how do you line to something that's different? What are some improvements the Holly Landlark Max can get? Well, for one, we see this plastic right there, this plastic, they can open up this plastic to make a bigger hole and that will stop the audio from changing being muffled as in a show in part one when using this thing rather than having to hide it in your clothes and not use this whatsoever and throw that in a way. So if you want to modify this, if you cut that hole open bigger inside, you will get better audio when using your little fur muff. Now the one thing that really drives me crazy is look, I just opened this and everything turned on. Now, Hollyland, what you need to do is if it's in the device, the pins are contacting the case, do not have it turn on. If I take this out and I want to use this, and I take one mic because I want to use that, and I put the case aside, sometimes I'll have this, and it just won't turn off the other microphone, and all of a sudden I'll have audio from two different microphones rather than the one. But right now, this thing is reacting as it should. But it happens. And that's what drives me nuts. I have an actor. I'm working with my actor. I'm using one mic and I'm seeing it's recording from two mics. So please improve that so it doesn't do it sometimes that I have to turn the other microphone off or that it's turning on when I open the case. Not till I pull it out, please, Hollyland. Do you use the Hollyland Lark Max? Should you upgrade? Well, I'll tell you right now. It's really pointless unless you have a need for those extra features. If you don't have either device, it is ultimately up to you, but I do prefer the tone of this, but maybe you are planning to record in a crowded studio, like a place with hundreds or thousands of people, then maybe the Rode wireless device will give you better sounding audio, but you'll lose the reception distance. There are other devices. There's even one from Hollyland that's like over a thousand dollars now that uses a different 1.9 gigahertz using a non-open standard like 2.4 gigahertz, which both the Rode Wireless Pro and this device use. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a most wonderful day.